Hello. Tonight, one British crime fighter and an American one. There's Inspector Morse, first at five past eight, with tragedy in his own family. 10.20 tonight and Dirty Harry Callahan hunting terrorists. That's Clint Eastwood as the enforcer. Plenty of action on Granada? You bet. doesn't leave you drowsy and is nice and easy to swallow. And now, just what the doctor ordered, an invigorating tonic of celebrity guests. Please welcome Billy Pierce, Bobby George, Jessica Martin and John Regis. <laughs> Hi, Bobby. Hi. Come in, Jessica. <laughs> Sit down. Hi, John. Nice Hi. to see you again. Hi. Make yourself at home. Yep. Now, then, last week, Oliver Skeet had to balance a spinning wheel on the end of a pole on his chin whilst walking six metres. So, did he go the distance? OK, Steve, spin the wheel. You ready for this, Oliver? OK. Yeah. You sure? I was ready to come on this show, wasn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Back a bit further. That's it. Right. Go. Brilliant. is about squash. Now, to me, the defining characteristic of this skillful, thrilling sport is not the lobs, the boasts, or the backhand smashes, but if that little ball hits you on the back of the leg, it doesn't half hurt. <laughs> Which probably goes some way to explaining why I'm a TV presenter and not an expert squash player, like our next challenger, Martine Lemonian. This is a squash court. Well, you have to use your imagination. It's part of it, anyway. Now, using two walls of the court, Martine is going to attempt to hit five squash balls into that target container in 90 seconds. The balls will be fired from a ball machine aimed at the small section of front wall. The balls will then bounce back to Martine. She'll then boast or ricochet the balls off the side wall in the direction of the target container. Let's hope this challenge is harder to explain than it is to do. Please welcome Martine Lemonian. Look, I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, well, I'm going to tell you quite a lot about Martine because I expect modest, modesty forbids her to tell you herself. This woman has been capped 86 times for England, the most capped uh, English squash player, am I right? She has been three times British champion, three times European cham champion, four times world team champion. The only world squash champion that this country has ever produced and the holder of the MBE. We've got to talk about this challenge. It's impossible. I don't normally say that. I mean, look, come on. Here's one I made earlier. <laughs> look at the size of that. Now, and you're expecting to get that from there, round there, in there, through there, in 90 seconds, 50, five of them. That went up a bit, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Five of them. How are you going to do this? Um, it is a, an extremely difficult challenge um, because you've got no perspective of being on a squash court and uh, if you don't get the perfect an angle it's almost impossible to get the balls in the hole. And what speed do they come out of that machine at? Um, maybe about 40 miles an hour. Right. Now if you were really lobbing the ball, what speed could you hit the ball at? About 140 miles an hour. <laughs> 
don't get in the way of this challenge. That's all I'm saying. I won't be doing that tonight, though. No, about what speed do you think you'll get it through there? Um, probably about 30, because you've got to um, create the angle. So it's obviously got to be hit a little bit slower. I think I could almost do this. If they had a challenge for actually somebody who could get the number of whizzes past the end of your racket with one of these, I could probably win it. I think it's an incredibly difficult challenge. Mm -hmm. You've set yourself a very difficult target. If you pull it off, you will have my utmost admiration and you can probably have my job. <laughs> you can get yourself ready. Ladies and gentlemen, Martine Lemonian. Uh, I'm going to start with Bobby, because, Bobby, you're into accuracy here. Yes. This is your sport in many ways. So, uh, do you think this is possible? If she played 86 times for England, she's got to be a good player. Thank you very much, Bobby. That's a yes from you. OK, yes. Billy. Um, I think then that she's going to do it, I think. Do you? Yeah, I think them balls are coming out there very, very quick, and she's got to whack it as hard as she can. I couldn't even throw it in there, to be honest. But, um, <laughs> as, as I say, um, <laughs> um, I think she's going to do it. Yeah, she looks like she can, doesn't she? Lovely. Mm. That's two yeses, John. Um, well, I think one sportsman to another. I think uh, there's no way I can say no. She's a world champion. She's got class. Absolutely. Yes. Three yeses. Thank you, Jessica. Well, I'm just taking a look at that thing that calls itself a boaster, and I know that's a vacuum cleaner, and she's had lots of practice at home. But you've got to allow for the element of chance, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my thumbs down for this. I'm sorry, I just have to be the devil's advocate, but no. Let's see what the audience think. Place your bets now, please. And tell us what you think at home. No, don't tell us. Tell each other. Come on. It's five she's got to get into that very small target. And 65% of our audience here believe that Martine can do it, and only 35% say no. OK, coach Dave Clark is in position by the machine. Are you ready, Dave? Yes, we're ready. OK, Martine, your time will start when the machine does. Good luck. You have 90 seconds. It's all yours. Even though I still think it's an impossible thing to do, I've seen you do it. You were only too short. Mm. It was his fault. It was his fault. <laughs> it was his fault. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. You get a medal. Everybody gets a medal on this show. Much coveted. <laughs> Slightly less coveted is the scroll. Nice try. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Clark and Martine Lemonian. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. John, you said yes. But you weren't alone. You have no points. 
I seem to remember you doing this on the last time you were on the show. <laughs> Jessica, you said no. You get 35 points for that because 35% 35 of, of our audience uh, said that Martine wouldn't make it. Bobby, you said yes, so you get no points. And Billy, you said uh, yes, and you get no points. What, we vying for the challenge at the end of the show? <laughs> yeah. It still could be Jessica as well. And of course, 35% of our audience were right. And of course, at the end of the show, those points get turned into pounds and donated to charity. Time now for our next challenge. And to be quite honest with you, it's all up in the air. Tonight, our new bet, two more names could be added the Flight Pioneer's Roll of Honour. Those names will be linked with some of the all-time greats, such as Wilbur and Orville Wright, Louis Blériot, Alcock and Brown, and of course, Wilson Keppel and Betty. <laughs> Those names are Bill Sherlock and David Kemp, because they could be the first men to fly a microlite whilst throwing balls at nets, yes? It's crazy, but it might just work. <laughs> Over this 200-metre course, we've erected five hurdles. At the base of three of the hurdles are these trawl-shaped nets. Now, whilst Bill is attempting to manoeuvre his microlite under and over the hurdles, David will bomb the nets with these balls and attempt to score ten hits. They'll be allowed five passes over the field. That's the challenge. Let's meet the men and their flying machine. Hi, Bill. Hello, Matthew. David, welcome to the show. Hello. Look at this sweet little machine. <laughs> How did these come into existence, Bill? Uh, they were evolved from hang gliders in the mid to late 70s, and uh, both in the States and over here in the UK. So does it go as a hang glider, as an aeroplane, or as a hairdryer? Oh, no, it's, uh, it's a, a small aeroplane, and it has um, civil aviation authority rules of its own. Yes. Is it good for flying at low altitude? It can be flown at low altitude, but uh, we always say in most types of aviation where there's an engine involved that safety is height. So it's much, much better to fly high and you have much more margin for error or if there are any problems, you've got time to search out. Well, you're going to have to fly places. very low here because, I mean, they're only, the, these are. Uh, hurdles are only nearly five metres high and only 50 metres apart. That's not much room for manoeuvre at all, is it? No, um, we've had a lot of practice. But you've got a lovely day for it. I mean, is this good weather? It's very calm. Yes, it is. Uh, it's a lovely day, but uh, unfortunately, we've carried out all our practice in, in high winds, or at least a lot higher winds than these, and it means that the aircraft is going to go over the ground a lot uh, quicker than it would in wind. Uh, it makes the challenge very much harder. Now, this is the man with the bombs, mm, David. Well, yeah. You've got all kinds of problems with this, haven't I you? Know, I know. What are your main difficulties? Well, like Bill says, because there's no wind today, we're, we're going down the course a lot quicker than we've been practising. Um, so I've got to be a lot quicker to, to aim and, and fire at the targets. Well, those um, targets are tiny. I know, I know. And look at your missiles. That's right. <laughs> doesn't give you much room for manoeuvre. No, no, we'll How fast be. will you be going? I will be going past the nets at about 50 miles an hour. So it's, uh, and I've got a short time to, to wait. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. So, if you've got the wind against you, yep, then right. you'll be going... A bit slow. slower. Yeah. So that makes the conditions all the more difficult to do the challenge in, which will make it even more exciting. So I wish you the best of luck, gentlemen. And it's up to us to decide whether this flying machine will make its men magnificent. <laughs> Billy, yeah. do you fly yourself? No, I've never flown except when I came off my push bike once. <laughs> Can they do that or not? I don't think so. I think that they don't sound very confident about their wind problems. <laughs> so, um, you know, they've been practicing with a lot of wind and apparently mm. their wind's gone off. That's right. And, um, so the wind was slowing them up, whereas now they're going to be a lot quicker because they haven't got the wind. That's right. <laughs> so I think that they sound a little bit non-confident, don't they? So right. I'm going to say no. I apologise for saying it, but... I think it must be quite difficult flying one of those things up and down, mustn't it? So where do they practice? So you get an, on airfields, that's where airplanes go. Not in here, then. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> thank you very much, that's Billy. Fine. No, thank you. John, uh, I think I've got to agree with Billy here. I, I can't see how they're going to do it, personally. Um, Why not? Well, Billy said wind. Um, and <laughs> so you're all going for the technical wind? approach. Absolutely, yeah. Right. Um, you have to be 50 miles an hour, accuracy in a little... Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. no. You're going for a no, thank you very much. Jessica? Well, I'm not going to be technical at all. I mean, I, I recognise 
David, as he calls himself now, of course he's Yuri and he used to work for Aeroflot, so of course he's <laughs> No, in Thank a word. Thank you, three knows Bobby. Um, Get the boys out of Well, I think they're, they sound quite military, the guys. Obviously <coughs> they've practised at it uh, yeah. a fair bit. And so I'm going to say yes. Military? Right. They sound military. Yeah, yeah, that'll do for me. OK, that's, yeah. that's a yes there. We've got three no's, one yes. Let's see what the audience thinks. Place your bets now, please. And don't forget to do this at home. That's right. Swish a box brownie round the living room. You'll get, you get a shot just like this one. Can they do it all not? Well, and 62% of our audience here say yes, they can. So it's back over to Rawton where the lads are clear for takeoff. And it's chocks away as David and Bill start their first run. A direct hit and one on the scoreboard. Under the hurdle and two. Number three and a 100% record on the first run. Lovely ear muffs. <laughs> Coming round for the second run. It's in. Giving the grass a quick trim while scoring another hit. And that's another perfect pass. Six scored. Under the hurdle, and that'll count. And that. But not that. First one missed. Only two more to get as they back round for the fourth round. One more needed. And there it is. Number ten. And there's one for luck. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Sherlock and David Kemp. Well, you see, now we thought the first challenge was pretty impossible and everybody thought that was completely impossible. But great, uh, great flying skill there, you know. And you, this should have been playing the Dumbusters March oh, to no, you. That was good at Cracker. Would you take charge of the medal? Yes, I will. And you take charge of the much-coveted Kelly, chins and all. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Bill Sherlock and David Kemp. Well done. Thank you, Scott. Magnificent challenge and a tragic panel. Look at this. John! No, 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 no. It's going to be between you and Billy, I know that, because Jessica, you still have 35. You were right to say yes, Bobby. So you have 62. You're in the lead with 62 points. Don't go mad now. Oh. Yes. And you have no points either, so that means there's still under 100 points on the board. Now, if you don't buck your ideas up, there'll be no money for charity at the end. Now, think on and look sharp. <laughs> you see, 62% of our audience were right. So that's the final hurdle cleared for part one. Join us after the break for the man who could play Diablo's advocate. I'll see you then. Ta-ra. Why pay more? With a two-pound jar of our no-frills orange marmalade for just 85p. Maybe you should be shopping at QuickSave. If you suffer from the pain of indigestion and heartburn, try Remagel. As you chew, it forms a soothing liquid that gives fast, effective relief. So, for indigestion pain, Remagel is an ideal solution. Remagel. It's chewy, not chalky.
Gillette sensor for women. No other razor feels like it. A unique handle for total control. Gonna hold on to this feeling and never let it go. Feel how its spring-mounted blades and pivoting head hold on to every curve, making it even safer and so incredibly smooth. You gotta hold sensor for women. A razor worth holding on to. Who needs it? We got good fellas American style pizza. The decentest, honestest I think there is. Right, Frankie? Mmm. You want deep pan? Fine. With a light and crispy base? Dandy. You like pepperoni? Bada bing. Mmm. You got juicy tomatoes. 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 Herbs even. Right, kid? Go on. Say cheese. Now shoot. Out of my restaurant. Good fellas American style pizza. Now available in your area. From stores with ice compartments. It's all right. It's a very special moment for my friend Sam. She's lost three stone with Weight Watchers and she's just got into a size 12. You could lose at least six pounds in your first two weeks with the new Weight Watchers program. In fact, if you don't, we'll give you a week free. That's guaranteed. Plus, join now and register free. Save nine pounds. Now, isn't that worth getting excited about? Yes! Ben, see this? You can get a pound off new tins of paint if you take old ones back to do it all. Hmm. That's interesting. Old tins of paint are no good to anyone. See ya! Mom! Except at Do It All's Great Paint Trade-In. Bring in an old tin and you'll get a pound off a new one. Another great offer so that together we can do it all. the channel. For your Le Shuttle brochure, call 0990 700 800 or see your travel agent. Yeah, welcome back. This here is a Diablo. Diablo, of course, being the French word for a devil. And mad, of course, being the French word for, never mind, I'll have another go. <laughs> a word which, hopefully, our next challenger won't need to use because he's a Diablo juggling expert. Expert, of course, being the English word for expert. 20-year-old <laughs> Peter Matthews from Bournemouth numbers amongst his many circus skills, Diablo juggling. But in true You Bet tradition, Pete's not content with juggling his Diablo standing on the ground. Pete says that whilst performing back somersaults on a trampoline, he can throw and catch the Diablo 15 times in one minute. The man must be mad. Let's meet him. Please welcome Pete Matthews. <laughs> Now, I did say that uh, Diablo juggling was among your many other skills. Tell us what else you can do. Um, I, I juggle clubs and balls and axes. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Easy. Um, I, do, I ride a six-foot unicycle. Why do you do all those things? Why do you do that? Um, well, I enjoy it, and, and I get a really good wage, so it, it compensates. Oh, for <laughs> money. Do you, do, do you, in fact, come from a, a circus family, perhaps? Uh, no, my mum and dad run a pub. Oh, you do come from a circus family. Yeah. <laughs> this is our now, this Diablo thing, listen, I find it really impossible. And I was around when it was actually in fashion. If I put this on here, could you give us a small demonstration of I'll the kind of things that you can do? All right, All right, let's just turn it around there. Yeah. First of all, we get it going. Yeah. Yeah. The idea is it's spinning very, very fast yeah. on the string. Right. Flip it up, do a trick called a cat's cradle. Like that. That's right. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You got tricks where you can just pass it over your leg? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Like that? Yeah. Do tricks where you throw it in the air, pirouette, catch it, throw it in the air, throw it in the air, oh, skip through, 
Throw it in the air? Yeah, Hang yeah, on. Yeah, just a short demonstration. Oh, no, I've got that. Oh, you've got all um, All right, we got... <laughs> Do tricks where you go over, round, over, under, round. Oh, we need to go over there, around there, and then hopefully it will just come out there. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> well done. Yeah. So... Now we know why you're on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about this challenge. Um, well, the idea is I'm throwing the Diablo in the air roughly about the same height as the ceiling of the studio here. And then when it's in the air, I'm going to do a back somersault um, and then catch it again. The hardest part, though, is when I throw it in the air, I've got to point the Diablo and know where it is. And then I've got to pick a point and do a back somersault and find the point again. And then find the Diablo, so it's very disorientating. Do you have, do you have any help? Um, well, I have my best mate Chris, he's going to be at the side and he's going to be saying forward or back or... No, nah, leave that one, mate, you've missed it completely. OK, <laughs> but... <laughs> now, if you drop the Diablo during a, a, a somersault, then it won't be counted. It won't be counted, but I have a row of Diablos so that I can go straight back into the challenge How many and times on. can you afford to drop it? Well, really, I mean, to do 15 in a minute, I can possibly afford to do, make two mistakes, but then that's going to really put, put it under strain at the end. So. Right, so, so I you can't really to make many stakes at all. On the edge, but that's what we like to see on this show. I reckon. On the edge. Right, well, you better go and get ready, ladies and gentlemen. Pete Matthews! <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Jessica! Now, come on, can you do it? What do you think? Well, I... I think there's a pretty good chance. I'm going to say yes. I've said no twice. I'm going to say yes just to be different. Yes, but I think you will. Go for a yes. yes. Thank Confident. you very much. Bobby. Um, the guy's professional, but I want the charity money to go up, so I'm going to say no. You think no? <laughs> <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> I'm going to say yes, because I, I think he's got nice legs. I'm, uh, <laughs> He's got a nice smile, and he's very good with that Diablo, and he looks like he's going to be brilliant on, on the trampette thing. I caught my bum in a spring once on one of them. <laughs> but I just think he's going to be able to do it. Yeah, I had all these ridges. Awful. Catch your bum in the spring. <laughs> Terrible. Thank you for sharing that with us. <laughs> right. John! Um, I honestly don't know. I'm, I have no points, so I have nothing to lose, and I, I think the fans want him to do it, so I think I've got to join the fans and say, yes, he can. Right. Oh, right! Fans of the whole audience. <laughs> Let's see what they think then. Place your bets now, please. Got a lot of fans there, Pete. I wonder if you've got as many fans at home. They'll all be rooting for you, I do know that. Oh, I've just seen your mother in the audience as well. Whoa! 84% say yes. OK, Pete, you ready? Good luck. You have 60 seconds. Three, two, one, go! In front of you, Pete. Behind. Behind, well behind, Pete. Forty-five seconds. To your right, left. To your right, Pete. Behind, way behind, Pete. 30 seconds. You have eight. No, you've got nine. 20 seconds. You've got 10. 11. 12. 10 seconds. 13. You need two more. 14. Five seconds. Four. Three. That's it. I'm mightily impressed with that because I've never seen you do it before. You've never done it before, have you? Nah. No. That's right. <laughs> you are a professional. Oh. 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 <laughs> now, now that you've got this skill, what would you like to do with it? I have to go home. <laughs> <laughs> well, before you go home, take that with you. 
Oh, that's for Chris. Everybody gets in it. Oh, Give that cheers, to Chris. right? Sure, Everybody gets one of these. Oh, yeah, one. That's the one <laughs> you want. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Christian Caldwell and Pete Matthews! Well done, Pete. Brilliant. <laughs> no, wait and see, because what's happened here is really interesting. Now, watch this, John. You said yes, so you get 84 points. Thank you very much. So you're no longer on nothing. Exactly. Jessica, you were on the second to the last there with 35 points, and you get 84 points. So that whoops you into the lead. You get no points because you said that it wouldn't do it, and then it did do it. And you had the most points before. You said yes, and you oh. did. You're excited now. I've got you? some points. So you got yeah. some yeah. points. <laughs> yeah. 84 points, Thank which you. means oh. you're last now. Thank you. Funny how things turn out, really, isn't it? And, of course, 84% of our audience were right. All right, all right. Calm down, calm down. Are you calling our next challenger an expert? Because he is. 22-year-old Simon Newby from Cluid is, of course, a major Brookside fan. He says that he knows the Channel 4 soap so well that he can identify five clips chosen at random from 40 telling us the year it was transmitted, the number of the house in Brookside Close that's featured, and the name of the characters who are living there. That's the challenge. Now, before we meet Simon, let's choose our five clips. Yes, I'm coming for you. Well, before I come for you, I'll explain. You see, our video wall, see, just over there, shows 40 numbers, which represent the 40 clips that you'll choose from. I say you, because you, the audience, are going to, be, going to be doing the choosing, you see. When you shout stop, the red dot stops, thereby selecting the clip. That'd be suitably obscure for you. So let's ask the first one. Now, watch the red dot, and in your own time, when you feel like it, just say stop. Stop. Oh, that was very skilled, look at that. <laughs> oh, that looks like a bit of an angry one, that. Right. <laughs> OK, now, the next gentleman. As soon as you see the red dot, stop. Right, oh, that's, that's a good number. Hello. Hi. Do you want to say stop when you feel um, like? Stop. Oh, well done. <laughs> People guessing here in the audience now. <clears throat> Would you just say stop when you feel like it? Stop. And we want one final clip. You, sir, would you uh, do the honours? Stop. Right. Oh, <laughs> high drama now. Thank you very much, sir. OK, let's meet our Brookside boffin, Simon Newby. How are you, Simon? Hi, thanks. Good man. Good to see you. So, right, I'll give you facts about Brookside that I know. It's Liverpool. Yeah. It's uh, there's six houses in the close, mm -hmm. and it's been running for 12 years, which means that you must have been 10 when it started. Spot on. What I can't understand is, is uh, being tied to a show. I mean, this must have tied you to uh, whenever it is of an evening, or, or to the Saturday omnibus, mm -hmm. every week for the last 12 years. No, all it takes is an hour and a half a week to watch it, and that's it. Do you watch it with your family? Usually, yeah, most times. Yeah. And do they enjoy the show? Most of them do, yeah. It most is a very watches. good show. It's a very good show. And this information that you have, because this challenge you're going to do, there's a lot of information. That's you're going right. to tell us the people yeah. who live there, the number of the house, yeah. and the year of the clip. And you only get a very short clip. Now, that's right. You, can have, you cannot have got this just from watching the series over 12 years. You must have inside information. No, just seen a series once. I've got no tapes of the show going back years. Well, there's a lot there. You obviously are an expert, but I, I think it's still a very hard challenge. We'll find out if our celebrities here okay. think that you can do the challenge. John, come on. Uh, I'm not too sure. I'm... <coughs> I think it can be done, but I'm not convinced that, it can, that he will actually do it. But in saying that... I think I'd normally say no anyway, so I'd say yes, because every time I say something that I shouldn't say, it's the other one, so I'll go for <laughs> the opposite of what I should say, which was no, so I'll say yes. Don't worry, John, you have made just as much sense as you have in all the other challenges. <laughs> and you'll probably get just as many points for it, too. <laughs> Jessica? There, he'll do it. That's two yeses there. Bobby, what do you think? Yes, I think he will. 
You think he will? Yeah. yeah. I have to say that Roy Hattersley last year tried the very self same thing on Coronation Street on this show and failed. And failed, right. He did fail, yes. That's encouraging, isn't it? That is encouraging. I didn't mean to. <laughs> no, sorry, <laughs> Billy, what do you think? Well, I'm going to say that I think it's a bit hard to do that. I, don't, I think he looks a bit... To me, he looks a bit young, and I think it's... Uh, he, to watch it an hour and a half, just uh, a week, and uh, no videos, and try and remember it, I think that's a bit impossible, really. So I'm just going to be a bit different to the rest of them and say, say no, I don't think he can do it. I'm awfully sorry, but... It's um, the ten-year-olds that retain the stuff, don't you, don't well, you know I that? Well, so. I, 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 can't, I can't remember what happened last week. I think being in show business affects your memory. Of course, the other thing it affects is your memory. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Billy. <laughs> Let's see what the audience think. Place your bets now, please. Now, this is the best bet, isn't it? You don't have to sit all the way through an omnibus. You just get to get a few clips of 12 years' worth. <laughs> And 70% of our audience think that you can do it. Now, that's a pretty fair vote, but it's not putting under too much pressure. No, okay, okay. All right? Yeah. Okay. Are you ready for this? Ready, yeah. Whatever you do, don't panic. Okay. Don't say the first thing that comes into your head and pass if you want to. We'll do. You ready for your first clip? Ready, yeah. It's coming up yeah. now. Okay. <clears throat> it's started. Waters are broken. We'll go for an ambulance. It's quick. Oh, no. Oh, I say. <laughs> OK. Yes? The people in that clip were Sammy Daniels, mm -hmm. Frank Rogers. Yeah. The house was number, number five, mm -hmm. and the year was 1992. Let's see if you're right. Yes, he was. Yes. <laughs> That's very nice. Okay. Should be better off calling a plumber, I think, but there you go. <laughs> uh, next, uh, next clip. Yeah. Okay. okay, coming up now. So it's never going to enter the red that you've had anything to do with it, is it, eh? Listen, you've got to make it look realistic. Not this realistic, you don't. Right. Okay. The character who lived in the house was Billy Corkill. Mm hmm The house was number ten. Yeah. And the year was 1987. Let's see if you're right. Yes! You're good at this. Come on, come on. Ready for number three? Ready, yeah. Coming up now. Fine. Tell me. What have you done with Danny? Come on, tell me. Tell you what? Tell me who Danny's real father is. Oh, you are. <laughs> come off it. You've been lying to me for the last ten months. No, I've not. OK, the characters were Terry and Sue Sullivan. The house was number nine. And the year was 1990. Let's see if you're right. Yes! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what, what was that about? What, what was it about? He just found out that um, his son wasn't his son, basically. No! You know, a nasty affair. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible, yeah. All right. Do you know I'm getting into this programme already? Yeah. 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 Are you ready yeah. for the fourth one? Ready for the fourth, okay. yeah. Oh, my God. Let me look at her. She's cold, Paul. Phone an ambulance straight away. Oh, God. She's not dead. No, no, that's Say not she's not dead. Get the ambulance. Oh, well, my car will be quicker. No, no, phone an ambulance. We must move. OK, the characters were Jonathan and Laura Gordon Davies. The house was number nine, and the year 1987. Let's see if you're right. Yes! <laughs> did, uh, did, did she recover at all? No, she was on a life support machine for about six months, and then they switched it off, so. That was, oh. it. that was the end of her, unfortunately. She should have checked the small print in the contract. <laughs> <laughs> Never do, do they? Very this sad. is your fifth and final one. Fifth and final one. Good yeah. luck. Thank you. Here it comes now. OK. What are we doing? He's brought us down to his level. It's either him or us. What a 
are you doing? <laughs> OK, then, the characters were Best, Mandy and Trevor Jordash. The house was <laughs> number 10 and the year 1993. Let's see if you're right. Yes, yes. you're right! Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. 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 And was that the body under the patio? That was the body under the patio. Excellent. Yeah. I'm going to watch this show from now on. Congratulations. Are you Thanks feeling so better? A lot better now, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Simon Newby! Okay. Simon said that if he got that, he was going to do a double somersault on his chair then. Bless him. John, you said yes. And you get another 70 points to add to that. Um, this is marvellous. The points are going to whack up on here now. Jessica, you said yes. You go up to 189 now. Bobby, you said yes. This is putting you in good stead. And this now leaves you, Billy, <laughs> with a <laughs> short straw. He let me down, didn't he? But there's plenty of time yet, don't worry. <laughs> and, uh, of course, 70% of our audience were right as well. It's time to say ta -da, kid, to part two. Join us after the break for five challengers who go at full tilt to give us a bonus game. See you then. ta -da. Six miles. I'm real hungry. As soon as we're there, we'll get into those McCoy's potato chips. Oh, real potato cut thick and generous. And cooked to the color of gold. I can feel them. I can taste them. Oh, darn it. Let's eat now. Where'd you put them? Oh, heck. The real McCoy. The big chip from the big country. Ah, bread and butter pudding. My granny always used to tell me. Son. She'd say. The most important thing in a bread and butter pudding isn't the bread or the butter. It's the right kind of sugar. And for me, it's got to be pure cane caster sugar made by Tank and Lyle, the only cane sugar refiners in Britain. It mixes right, it melts right, and it tastes right. There's a recipe on the back of every pack of Tank and Lyle granulated. You know, the stuff you put in your tea. Sam, the most important thing you put in your tea. Smile, it's Tate and Lyle. You can get all these kitchen units and the appliances and save over £250 at B&Q. You can do it when you b and it. Ladies and gentlemen, Britain's leading upholstery specialist has cut prices by 40% till this weekend. There's 40% off this and 40% off this. There's 40% off this and 40% off this. You save 40% off all special Easter time offers. That's a big saving. Just 998 buys you both these other sofas. Plus, you choose anything in store, pay not one penny till November, and then take four years free credit. This 40% saving at Sunday, 5 p.m., prompt. Welcome back. This 
with a snake board, a mighty leap forward in skateboard technology. It's possible to propel oneself on a snake board without touching the ground. And if you think I'm going to show you how, think again. I tried it earlier, and I don't know who was more embarrassed, me or the llama. <laughs> However, our next challengers are all snakeboard experts and hopefully pinball wizards as well. Matt Law, Tom Budding, Abraham Ruiz, Thomas Alanya and Christian Mitchinson are all exponents of the new street sport of snakeboarding. And they say that they can score 375 points on this giant pinball game in 90 seconds or less. Let's find out how they're going to do it. Please welcome Matt Law, Tom Budding, Abraham Ruiz, Thomas Alanya and Christian Mitchinson. Is that yours? Yeah, right now, the first thing I want to know is about the attraction of these snake boards. Well, because your feet are strapped down to it, you can move along without like, putting your feet on the ground. And like, it's a lot like um, snowboarding, because you can jump around and like all the movements and stuff, just like snowboarding. But it's uh, like snowboarding? Yeah. But it's not like skateboarding? No, not at Because all. you've got your feet attached to it. I hate to tell you this, but you see, look, if you just got rid of this nasty bar down the middle, then you'd have a lovely pair of roller skates, really, wouldn't you? <laughs> wouldn't that be just as good? No. Oh, right. Well, <laughs> well that's told me, then. Well, who invented these things? Um, James Fisher in South Africa, mm -hmm. about three years ago. So they're only going about three years, these. Are there kind of uh, national and international competitions, are there? Um, there was the World Championships in Guernsey, and there's been the national... South African championships. Let me, uh, let me find out about this challenge. Now, how do you score the points? You say you're going to score 375 points off this pinball. Now, what scores points? Well, we get five points for each of these pinball buzzers behind us for uh, like, hitting one of them successfully. So when you press one of those uh, red things on the, the lit-up bits, yeah, we get that's a five, five point. Yeah, we get ten points for each jump, and we've got the one jump there and the little jumps at the end that are going to be moved in. Right, so you could score what... Points 30 each. points each on, on one on go. Run, yeah. So uh, you're going to have to do several goes each. Well, like yes. Yeah. And what happens if you do fall over? Well, if you're near a buzzer, you can hit a buzzer, but then otherwise you've just got to get straight out of the side and back to the beginning. Well, if you break your legs, don't come running to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, go and get yourselves ready. Matt, Tom, Abraham, Thomas and Christian. I'm sorry, I wouldn't, would you, John? Oh, thanks, Matthew. <laughs> well, I was hoping to go last. So I could see everybody else did, and I could choose. I don't, I don't even. I haven't the foggiest. I've never seen nothing like this before. I've never heard of a snake board. No. You think no? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> and Jessica. Well, I don't think it's anything to do with the snake boards, John. I think it's those magic trousers they've got on. It's aerodynamics <laughs> with the wind inside the trousers, and they're going to do it. They did tack in a bit, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice that. I'm Thank intrigued you. by them. <laughs> oh, later. Bobby. Yeah, skate it. Skate it? Yeah. Do you easy. think so? Yeah. Easy. Do it easy. Oh, that'll do for me. Yeah. Just show us your rings for a minute. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> Billy. Well, <clears throat> I think they'll do it, but I wouldn't like to have my feet tied together for anybody, really. I, um... <laughs> not even for Reading, on this. No, not really, no, no. Um, it must be awful, that, mustn't it? I mean, if you do fall off, you can't put your foot down, can you? No, you can't. You think about it, because you can't, can't get your foot out the straps, can you? No, you can't. As they say. But I think that they look like the guy, type of guys who'll be able to do that quite easily, I think, really. You Whiz do? Whizzing round, yeah. Oh, splendid. Mm. So you're going for a yes, that's three yeses, one no. Let's see what the audience think. Place your bets now, please. And what do you think at home? Have you heard of snake boarding? Or not? Well, you don't have to have heard of it. The question is, can the boys do it or not? Well, there's loads of confidence here in the studio. 84% say yes. OK, Chris, are you ready? Yeah. Good luck. You need 375 points in 90 seconds. Your time starts... Now. Get out, get out.
you see, you're overexcited now just because you did it. And if I ever, ever, ever catch up without your helmet again, <laughs> there's going to be trouble. For the very simple reason that I don't think the NHS could cope. Frankly, do you? Congratulations. Thanks. That was the fastest I've ever seen you do it. Are you happy with it? Yeah, very. Thanks. Well, I'm glad you know what you're doing. We're still working as a team, innit? So we're boys down to. Exactly. And skill. And knee pads. <laughs> <laughs> you will each get a medal. I knew you'd be thrilled. But there's only one of these. Cheers, we don't throw them about lightly. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Matt, Tom, Abraham, Thomas, and Christian are snakeboarders! I'm going to start with you, Billy. Oh, no. Because you've just scraped by. Have I? Because you said yes, they would do it. Yes. So you get yourself a lot of points for that, right? Well, there you go, you So see. you're not the loser now, you I see. know, I didn't no. start off very well, did I? No, but you did very well, you got the hang. I Bobby, mm. you see, you didn't quite make it, but you did mm. very well yourself. You didn't mm. win and you didn't lose. Lovely. Jessica, you won, but I'll be right back to you later. John. <laughs> John, you said no. Fatal mistake, really. You've blown it. Thank you. But you see, 84% of our audience didn't blow it. No, they were right. But no, not you. You got it wrong. <laughs> that means that you're this week's losing luminary. Thank you. Our celebrity challenger. <laughs> but don't throw a wobbly because it's the potter's wheel for you. So please welcome our challenge demonstrator, Tim Dancy. Come with me, John. <laughs> Tim, you. welcome back. Tim, John, John, Tim. Hi, Tim. Now, Tim, you're in expert hands here, because you've been here before, haven't you, Tim? I have, yes. yes. And what, what were you doing last time? I had to make six pots in two minutes. Uh, which was, uh, how many seconds a pot do you have to do? 20 seconds. 20 seconds a yeah. pot. And I had one second left, so just did it. Well, it won't be that bad. <laughs> Would you like to show John what, you're, what he's going to have to do? Doddle. Fabulous. Follow us round. Tim Dancy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now... <laughs> You can stand here. Not too close, not too close. I don't, I don't want any spattering of the stars. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You've got to do this in a minute. Now, watch very closely. Can you give us a commentary while you're going, Tim? Yeah, absolutely. Right, First of all, you've got a centre of clay. Shove it in the centre, and you pull the clay up gently, push downwards, make it central, right? Of course. Put your thumb downwards, pull outwards at the sides, and gently squeeze the sides upwards. <laughs> Make the shape. Of course. Get the water out from inside, and if you've got enough time, make a frilly edge. <laughs> just like doing pastry, really. Of course. And then just cut it off with the wire. Look, what could be simpler? You can do that. No problem. So all John has got to do is throw your basic common or garden, a very ordinary pot, in 30 seconds, as if. <laughs> Show us the other pot, Tim. Like that. There you are. That's all you have to do <laughs> in 30 seconds. Now, are you happy, Bunny, now? Not really. That's all you've got to do. What you at home have to do is give us a call with your vote. If you think that John will be able to throw a pot, then the number to ring for a yes vote is 0891 555 But if you think the only thing John will throw is a tantrum, then call 0891 555 for a no vote. As always, the lines are open until midnight on Sunday, and if you get it right, and our computer picks out your call, then a charity in your area will be going potty over £1,000. So join us next week to see if John will succeed on his very own Wheel of Fortune. John Regis, ladies and gentlemen. And now, we come to the joyful bit. Jessica, you are the winner. Let's see how much money you're going to get for charity tonight. So let's take your points and add them to all the other celebrities' points. And that gives us a celebrity total of... 
811. This looks very promising. Let's add our audience points together. That gives us an audience total of 335. We'll add the audience points to the celebrity points. That gives us a grand total of 1,146. As I said before, the points get turned into pounds and donated to charity. So we'll quadruple that to get a decent figure. And I think it will be a decent figure tonight because we have 4,584 pounds for charity to be donated to a charity nominated by this week's winner, Jessica Martin. Jessica, who would you like the money to go to? I'd like the money to go to the charity for cerebral palsy. Thank please. you very much. Excellent, Jessica. And that's all we've got time for tonight. My thanks to our celebrity guests, Billy Pierce, Bobby George, Jessica Martin and John Regis. Of course, our thanks to the most important people, our challengers. We'll be back next week. Join us then. Good night. <laughs>